Hey there and welcome back to Plow and Pantry. Today I am tackling some maintenance chores in the garden that I've been avoiding. I haven't been purposely trying to avoid these chores, but I've just had more pressing things to get done here. But it was time to get on these before my tomato plants got destroyed. And that is I am pruning and tying up my tomatoes. I grow my tomatoes on cattle panels. I know a lot of people do the single trunk method these days, um, but if you garden for any length of time, you will learn quickly that there is just more than one right way to do things. And I like to do things on the cattle panels this way. I start by pruning off any suckers, at least early in the season I do. It's not always easy to keep up with later. And I also prune off anything that is touching the ground. That just leads to disease in the near future. So I just head it off at the pass and prune it. And also, if it's growing kind of pointed down and looks like in a few days it's going to be touching the ground, I go ahead and prune it off. I prune off anything that's yellowing. I prune off anything that's spotted. Pretty much, if it gives me an excuse to prune it, I do. Tomatoes are really disease prone, so anything that shows signs of disease, it just has to go. When I moved into my first house, I planted tomatoes and I didn't realize they were so prone to disease. And when I had problems early on, I asked my mom about what was wrong because she was a master gardener and a farm advisor. And she told me that tomatoes will always get disease if they're in the ground long enough. So you just kind of try to elongate their lives by keeping them as healthy as possible until you get your fruit that you want and you keep getting fruit until frost comes or the plant just gets too gross and you pull it. I told her I never remembered seeing those problems in our gardens growing up, and she told me I just didn't notice because I was a kid. Anyway, I'm going around and pruning these and tying them up, and that is another way I'm a rebel these days. I know that a lot of people like to use those small white round clips for tomatoes, and I've tried them and they just aren't easy to work with in my opinion. I know people that don't have problems with them but I just don't find them that easy to use and in my son I feel like they just don't last all season they break really easily and kind of disintegrate by the end of summer um, so I like to use these garden clips I usually get them at the Dollar Tree when they have them but they don't have them every year so if they don't have them I order them on Amazon I like them not only because they last longer than my other the other ones I've tried but I also can easily move them around with one hand. I like to have like one hand to move a tomato branch and one hand to manage the clip because as tomatoes grow you always have to retrellis and retie them and it's just easy to use one hand for each and just move things quickly that way at least for me. So um, I prefer to use these. I also like that they're green and blend in a little bit. Um, so I get all seven, six rows of my tomatoes done this year that I have, plus my tomato tunnel. The tomato tunnel has all the cherry-sized tomatoes this year. Sometimes I grow green beans on that tunnel. Sometimes it is tomatoes. There have been a lot of growth on all these plants the past couple weeks. There's blooms, there's baby tomatoes. I am super excited to get some ripe fruit. They are by far my favorite crop and the priority when I plant. When spring weather gets in the way of me getting the whole garden in at one time, the tomatoes are the first thing in. So after I pruned and tied up the tomatoes, I started removing my bee balm. A uh, wind had started to knock it over. You could see the root ball was starting to come up, but um, I had an entire box this year that grew up from last year's plants that I put there. I put three little ones last year and this is what I have. Um, I left it a little bit just to get some flowers and harvest some bee balm leaves and flowers for tea and medicinal use and to give the bees something. But the flower heads are now spent and they're starting to look less than great. So I pulled these out to make room for some other flowers I need to get in the room. So I, what I did was I just took out the whole plants and took them over to the chickens. They enjoy digging through those and eating the foliage and any bugs that might be in the dirt part of them. And then I brought over my cobra head weeder and I, a bucket to pull out all the other weeds that had grown in the understory there. 
I dumped those in my chicken run as well. After I dumped those, the dirt level in that box was pretty low, so I put some more cardboard because it was near the bottom to keep the grasses that were growing in there, like weeds, keep them down. And then I topped it all with fresh soil. And then I planted some of the other flowers I've had sitting in pots that needed to get into the ground. There's just a menagerie here. There's a few different types of calendula, several plants of purple cone flower. I'm thinking of putting purple cone flower in my front flower bed in front of my house. Um, they're perennial, so I might dig them up next year and relocate them there. I also had a few petunias that I started from seed. I don't remember what color they are. I think I have a plant or two of stock in here as well. Since I harvested the bee balm, I also decided to harvest a few trimmings of some other herbs. I got some basil. I'm forever pruning the basil. I got parsley, a little bit of dill, and a few flowers from a marigold plant. I trim the flowers off the dill pretty early. I like to use the dill plant or dill weed instead of the seed head when I make pickles. And that orange marigold is the only orange one I have. I bought it on a clearance and just plopped it in the ground. It was half dead. And then I forgot about it, but it's totally thriving now. Normally I plant the white marigolds. Marigolds aren't really my favorite flower. It usually comes in oranges and reds, which aren't my favorite, and I also don't like the smell. But I do like to cook with those blooms, the orange ones. And I try to have one of those every year for that. And the I plant the white ones throughout the garden just because it helps with pest resistance, and the chickens love them. When I pull them out at the end of the season and I toss them in the chicken run, they attack them. So then I looked at my clock. I had about 20 minutes left before I needed to go in, so I decided to weed the last row on the cucumber side of my garden. I need to plant peas here in a few weeks, so it's time to start prepping the fall areas. I like to loosen up the big weeds with a pitchfork, and then I use my cobra head to go through and pull them all out by hand. And the buckets of weeds also go to the chickens. They eat some of them, but not all of them, but they do like digging through them, even if they don't eat them. If you put a pile of anything near chickens, they will entertain themselves by digging through it and spreading it around. On the way into the house, I stopped and checked on my zinnia hedge. If you missed that video, I'll link it here. The plants have now adapted to the transplant um, time. It usually takes a couple weeks. They're putting on new growth now. So I went through and topped them all. Pruning zinnias when they're young helps them bush out and grow more stems. And I want these bushy so that it's like a bushy hedge. While I was pruning them, I found this crazy looking spider I've never seen before. I'm not a spider fan, but I try to leave them in the garden because they eat garden pests and they're beneficial. But I have never seen one like this. It blended into the leaf and I almost didn't see it. So I ended up just leaving that plant and I will try to remember to prune the top off of that one later. After I got inside, I stuck my herbs that I had pruned into a large bowl of water to keep them rinsed and get the bugs off and stuff. And while they were sitting there, I showered and fed the family and took care of regular things, you know, like dishes, laundry. And then that afternoon, I pulled the herbs out of the water to dehydrate them. I thought I could get them all three, uh, get them all on three trays: one for the basil, one for the parsley, and the marigold flowers, and then one for the bee balm and dill. Because I didn't have that much bee balm and dill, but I ended up needing to add a second tray for the basil. Then I got those into the dehydrator and it was on to other things for the day. Thank you so much for joining me here today on my semi-homesteading adventures. I hope you guys like and subscribe so you can catch the next video and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.